One of the people I like to watch on YouTube is a channel called Pile of, the Pile of Stuff. He does a lot of interesting videos on several subjects. One of the things he likes to do is model, uh, model trains. In one of his videos he was uh, making a servo controller for his model train set to control the switches but tell the train which way to go. Uh, he wanted to automate the process so that if the train was coming wrong, coming back across the switch, it wouldn't derail. It would, the switch would be automatically uh, adjusted to the right position. He was using uh, IR sensors to detect the, the presence of the train, and an, he wanted her to use an A-Tiny 85 initially, just because of its uh, small, the size of it, the eight-pin chip. It also, he had uh, two buttons to manually control the position of the servo. The servo had to have adjustable end stops so that uh, it wouldn't bind when it reached the limits of a work, what the switch could handle. He eventually ended up using an Arduino Nano, I think, with a pot or two pots to control the end position of the servos or the servo. I thought I would give it a try with the A-Tiny 85 just because it seemed like fun. A lot of people in the comments suggested that he use uh, buttons instead of pots to con to adjust the position and store them in EEPROM. That's what I've done here. I want to demonstrate it first. I got a battery box over here. I have a servo up here. If we push uh, one button, it goes all the way to one end. The other button all the way to the other end. You can actuate it with uh, the IR sensors also. The IR sensors are just hooked to the same pins as the buttons. They're hooked up to 220 ohm resistors. The thing about this uh, makes it most difficult is you have to be able to set the end stops. To do that we're going to go into programming mode. First of all, let's uh, go back here. We'll go into programming mode push the programming button in the middle, the LED starts to flash. Now we select which end we want to adjust. So let's adjust this end over here. Then we can use the, the buttons to uh, adjust wherever we want it. Press the program button and uh, that side has been adjusted. So if we want to adjust the other side, press the programming button. We have a slow flash on the LED select which one we want to adjust. This side over here we do whatever adjustments we want on it. When we're done we pr press the programming button again. Now we've set Let's go through that once again. Press the programming button. We get a slow flash to d tell us that we're, it's waiting on which one it, we want to adjust. So let's adjust this one. Let's adjust a little wider. Okay. When we're done, after we've selected it, you'll notice that it's program it's flashing a little faster. When we're done to we get it in the position we want, we press the programming button again. It goes into solid mode to adjust the other side. Program, slow flash, select the side we want. The servo moves to that side. A faster flash. Do whatever adjusting we want. Press the program button again and we're done. If we let it set for 10 seconds, it's going to go into a, a mode where the servo is not actively driven. The pulses to the servo stopped. It'll just set there. You can see that right now. It's actually fast, flashing faster than the camera is showing, I believe. So the servo is not driven. You can move it around a little if you want to. As soon as we press either of the other buttons, it's going to be driven again. There is one little problem with this setup. Since these switches and these buttons are basically in parallel, if you block a switch, it's going to interfere with your inputs on the buttons. That could be 
pretty easily fixed by using a toggle switch, a single pole double throw switch, where you have this line and a line from the switch going into uh, the terminals of the toggle switch and then the common going to the, of the toggle switch going to the uh, pin that goes to the a tiny pin. And you could select whether you wanted a these sensors or these buttons to control that particular pin. So it's in its drawn driven mode now. You can use it. Now let's say you're adjusting it and uh, let's adjust this side. And you get it, everything all out of whack. And let's adjust this side. Now it's going to work backwards so it, it was before. So you, you get lost when you're programming it. It's pretty easy to do. You can push with the power off, push the button down, then turn the power back on while still holding the button, and it'll return to its default states of maximum travel. Of course, this is all stored in uh, EEPROM. Let's do some adjusting. So that's, that's our travel now. We turn the power off, give it a minute, turn the power back on, and those are still the travels we have. They were stored in EEPROM. There's also a checksum in the EEPROM, uh, not a very robust checksum, I'm sure, that supposedly, but, well, it did when I tested it, will uh, restore default values if uh, the data is corrupt or out of range. That's kind of hard to show now because I don't have to put uh, the wrong values in the EEPROM. I was able to do that during testing though. I did not develop uh, this on the board, the ever board. I developed it on this uh, development uh, experimenter board that I've been working on. It has uh, the A-Tiny here, a Nano that's been uh, programmed as a programmer, Arduino as IS, or yeah, Arduino as ISP I believe is what it's called. But anyway, this Nano is what programs the A-Tiny through this cable. The board has LEDs and push buttons you can use just by running jumpers from your these headers to whatever you want. These headers are connected to the pins through these switches, but if the switches are set in the program mode, then those pins are connected to the nano programming for programming. That way you can isolate the two. It makes development pretty easy. You just uh, download your program over switches in one position and then flip them to the other position and see if it works. This is a board I designed originally in Eagle and uh, I ordered some boards from JCL or JLC, I forget the name of it, the PC board place that everyone's familiar with I'm sure. So I just threw this in the Gerber's with this and without order since you can get two boards for almost as cheap as uh, one with the shipping, you spend mostly for shipping. Uh, this is just a test project. I'm going to do, be doing some more development on it. I just wanted to, uh, one of the reasons I did this project was to, an a tiny project, was to use this board uh, to see if it, if it was uh, functional. I've we'll learned several things I want to change on it. I want to add a uh, physical reset button. I also want to take these switches and put them outside of these headers so just to make it easier to use, easier to access, I need to redo the power uh, on the bottom, the traces, they're not nearly thick enough. I'll also get this designed and manufactured from uh, JCEL. That's just these boards and uh, this board were actually made on my 3018 CNC using the isolation writing method. I've been uh, enjoying getting into that lately. 
another reason I wanted to make a project like this just to to run through uh, the tool chain for making all this stuff you have to get used to making stuff like this because it's, it's fairly involved if you don't do it every so often it's every time you do it it'll be just like you're doing it for the first time I believe that's all I wanted to uh, show on these I'll do a little walkthrough of the code it won't be very in-depth most of the uh, the code is just the user interface as you might imagine uh, the servo code is something I found on GitHub it, uh, I did do some modification uh, to it to get uh, more throw from the servo at the expense of some resolution one, one of the problems you running these ATiny 85s is they only have a 8-bit counter or 8-bit counter timer and that's uh, kind of a problem when you're trying to do servo stuff well we'll look at the code now we're going to take a quick look at the code now I'm not going to go into great detail about how it all works because that'd take forever uh, at the top we just brief description of what it is when you use your interface the different modes it goes in to determine what it's doing at any time and what it's going to do next uh, when you're programming it and the IDE to send it to a chip you need to use these settings 8 megahertz uh, timer 1 clock as a CPU frequency millis micros disabled that's very important I'm not sure if this matters or not EEPROM not detained brownout detection disabled here's the physical connections that are made for the pins here's the credit for where I got the uh, servo routine for driving the servo although I've modified it quite a bit to get a little more uh, uh, range from the servo movement range at this at the price of uh, some of its resolution we're going to use the EEPROM uh, feature in the Arduino Let's see there's some defines one thing you're going to notice about this code is it does not look like most Arduino code you've seen because I originally started uh, writing it with the Atmel Studio 7 and then I thought I would just run it over to the Arduino IDEs because that's uh, more people use it and if you're going to put something out there for people to use this is probably the way to go and here's where we see that uh, the difference to uh, turn on the well like let's use LED to turn on the LED port B equals port B and not uh, one shifted left LED that's the way you do it in uh, most C compilers for embedded controllers let's turn it on and uh, turn it off is port B or LED off equals port B or one shifted left LED these are not as uh, crazy as you might think after you learn to use them it's not much different than what you used to use on a Commodore 64 to set in clear bits except for the shift part here we are looking at the setup and the loop functions in the code the setup function I didn't put anything in here I just did it all right at the top of in my loop function uh, defining some uh, variables uh, setting some initial uh, initial uh, I use two of those variables initializing the ports this is where it waits to see if the program's button is pushed down when you're powering up and if it does it loads in the new values from the EEPROM and checks them for if they're in range this is the meat of a program this while one this is just another forever loop inside of the main loop uh, what it does it waits for the 50 the servo pulse to start that's what this okay to change is this is from some old code I wrote for even another processor it was and it increments something called a jiffy clock it's just a, a timer tick that happens every 50 Hertz this is where you get your timeout so if it's a uh, if it's greater than a timeout you put it into mode 4 where it blinks really fast and uh, 
turns off the servo enable so the servo is not driven anymore. And we go down here and we check our program button. Uh, if it's true, and we set this program push to true, and the next time through, if it's true, and the program pushed is true, or if the program has been button has been released, and it sets released to true, because things will happen when the program button is released and not when it's pressed down, except on startup if it's held down. This is what blinks the LED, just the counter that toggles the LED after however many things are in blink count. However many counter and blink count. These this uh, switch case at the top of the, the program or at the top of this uh, forever loop goes through each mode and determines what to do uh, depending on mode 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. I'm not going to go into each one of those. It'd take forever. That was for the program button being released. Now here, down here below this line, there's another uh, switch case statement. It's going to act on what mode it's in and look at the pins, uh, whether the uh, buttons are pushed down or whether the sensors are made, same thing. And it'll act on those depending on what mode it's in. not a very detailed look at all I know but it take forever to go through this uh, I'll post the code and uh, the schematics and uh, board layout on github in case anyone is interested well thanks for watching